Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to find me trying my level best to make a perfect target out of myself. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you wanted to see me. I do, Steve. And you can start this assignment by painting a nice big bullseye on your chest. Oh, fine. What's the deal? You're flying to Java to look for a little piece of paper. Brother, the paper shortage must be worse than I thought. This is no ordinary piece of paper, Steve. It contains a new formula for atomic fission. Stolen from this country, huh? Right. Well, what makes you think it's in Java? The night before last, the man was killed in Java. The authorities there found half the formula on his body. What do you mean, half of it? The formula is in two parts, Steve. Whoever stole it didn't realize that and only got half. He probably figured on making a fortune out of it on the open market. But he must realize by now that one half is worthless without the other. In that case, he'll probably try and get that other half. Exactly. Where is it? In the custody of a British intelligence agent named Snell in Sorabaya, Java. But I still don't see where I fit in. I... Hey, wait a minute. What's that routine you are giving me about painting a bullseye on my chest? You ought to go to Java openly, Steve. Get an envelope from Snell and then return. And in that envelope is the other half of the formula? No, we're not taking any chances. In that envelope will be a blank piece of paper. But we want whoever's interested to think it's the formula. Oh, swell. You don't want to take any chances, huh? Just with my life. It stands to reason that whoever has the missing half will come after you. It also stands to reason that doing a thing like this, I could get killed. I'm not going to minimize the danger, Steve. From the moment you leave Snell's house in Java, you're a marked man. But this is the quickest way to smoke the opposition out into the open. We've got to get that missing halfback. He's a halfback? Well, quarterback, fullback, a nickelback on your bottle. Oh. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. In all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you'll find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Well, I've had a lot of screwball assignments in my time, but I never thought to see the day when I'd be sending some guy a cordial invitation to kill me. It's Wednesday when my plane lands in Java, just as it's starting to rain. I fully expect to see some joker with a knife lurking in the shadows at the airport, but no one shows up. I take a cab to Snell's house, and no one answers my knock, so I try the door. It's unlocked. I shove it open. Inside, a little beady-eyed gent is just slipping a long, murderous-looking pair of scissors into a little black bag. Good evening. Oh, I thought the joint was deserted. Didn't you hear me knock? Oh, yes. Well, why didn't you open the door? Oh, because I will be extremely discourteous. What? You see, I'm not the one who lives here, Mr. Snell. He's the one who lives here. Yeah, I know that. Where is he? Uh, He's bathing. Uh, Please to make yourself at home and mix for yourself a drink. Wait a minute. You uh, don't feel right about answering the door, but you tell me to make myself right at home? It is what Mr. Snell would want you to do. Uh. Now, if you will excuse me. Where are you going? I must leave. I'm finished here. Completely finished. And when one's work is done, one leaves. Good evening. So I mix myself a drink and wait for Snell. Then I start thinking about the little gent with the scissors. The minutes drag by and the shower is still running in the bathroom. I start getting fidgety. Then it hits me. The little guy had said his work was done here. He could have meant Snell. I run to the bathroom, jerk the shower curtain. I say. Huh? Oh, you're okay, huh? Well, I I was at last report, old boy, but isn't it a bit thick charging into a man's bathroom like this? I'm sorry, I got a little worried about you. Nice of you to be concerned, old man, but I assure you I've been taking showers most of my adult life and never had a moment's trouble. Who are you, anyway? Steve Mitchell, from the States. Oh, Mitchell, of course. Uh, 
Uh, hand me that towel, will you, old boy? Huh? Oh, sure. Uh, thanks. Yes, I, I've been expecting you, Mitchell. But uh, what's this all about your being worried about me? I guess this deal's getting on my nerves already. A strange little character in your living room gave me some double talk and left. Uh, oh, that was Keller, my tailor. Taylor? Well, that explains the scissors all right. A ripping good one, too. I was beginning to wonder whether he'd been doing a little ripping on you. I say, this thing is getting on your nerves, isn't it? <laughs> Want to trade jobs? Thanks a lot, old boy, but I think this is one adventure I'll cheerfully forego. Now, if you'll be so kind as to hand me my robe. Huh? Oh, here you are. Yeah, thanks. Uh, now, as I understand it, when you leave here, you are to take the train to Batavia at the other end of the island. Oh, that's news to me. How come? Uh, slippers. Huh? Uh, slippers, old boy. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, well, I suppose it will give whoever's after you more a chance at you. Swell. Uh, come along into the next room. The envelope's in my desk. Okay. Uh, here you are, old boy. Just a blank piece of paper in an envelope. And for this, I get shot at. Well, thanks, Nell. I'll be on my way. Uh, Righto. Uh, oh, uh, just one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you understand you're not to go skulking down back alleys now. What do you mean? The point is, you are to make it as easy as humanly possible for whoever wants to take a shot at you. So, with this cheerful bit of advice ringing in my ear like a funeral bell, I leave Snell's place and start walking down the street. Already the deal has gotten on my nerves, and I'm hoping that whatever happens, it happens soon. I come to a street bazaar, and remembering Snell's advice to make myself conspicuous, I start browsing around. Pretty soon, I spot the girl. Yeah, just the kind you'd see in a grade B movie, dark and slinky, with foreign agent written all over. Ah, go away, will you? Fine, the girl studiously ignoring me, so I figure it's only a question of time before she makes her pitch. Then the routine will probably go as follows. We'll have a drink somewhere, then we'll go to her apartment, then she pulls a gun on me. So the only question in my mind now is, how do we get introduced? Does she bump into me, or does she drop her purse? And I'm right the first time. <gasps> Whoops, oh, pardon me. Oh, no, it was my fault. I, I was not looking where I was going. I see. Well, Fine, Spike, no and then done. drink it for your it lady. It was very clumsy of me, Mr. Uh... Steve Mitchell. Steve, I am Tanya. Huh. By rights about now, I should ask you if you'd like a drink, Tanya. <laughs> Why, as a matter of fact, I'd love one. Uh, the evening is so warm. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a bar near here, I suppose? Uh-huh, uh, just down the street. Quite a happy coincidence. Let's go. <laughs> You know, it is funny, Steve. One drink with you and I feel we've known each other for a long, long time. Uh -huh. but, but that's the way it is with me. I make up my mind quickly about people. <laughs> you were perhaps surprised when I accepted your invitation for a drink so quickly. Well, no, I can't say I was surprised, Tanya. What do you mean, Steve? Why, uh, like you said, it's a warm evening. Oh, yes. Tell me about yourself, Steve. What are you doing here in Java? Huh? A fishing trip, you might say. How about you? Oh, I'm afraid I could not tell you that. Oh? I always find it hard to explain the reasons which lead me from one part of the world to another. Perhaps it is that, that I like to be where there is color and excitement. I see. And people to drink with on warm evenings. <laughs> yes. Particularly that, Steve. You know, I'm glad I'm in Java tonight. Um... But speaking of warm evenings, it is getting a little stuffy in here, isn't it? Yeah, I thought you'd begin to notice it. You got any ideas? Well, uh... You don't happen to have an apartment near here, do you? Why, Steve, you're positively psychic. Yeah, I'm a whiz. Will you take me home, Steve? Of course. My, you sound quite eager to. Well, you might say I've been waiting for this moment all evening. Come on. This is where I live, Steve. Oh, okay. Here is the key. Would you unlock the door for me? Sure, sure. There you are. Thank you. And thank you for the lovely evening, Steve. I'd ask you in, but I'm afraid it's a little late. Huh? But perhaps you will call me one day soon. Wait a minute. You mean you're not going to invite me in? But, but I just told you it, it's rather late. 
Yeah, so he said. Good night, Steve. Just about the time I think I've got the whole deal figured out, Tanya pulls the big switch on me. I head back to my hotel, and now I'm more in the dark than ever. Maybe Tanya isn't the one after all, or maybe she's just playing it slow and smart. The next morning, I go down to the station and get on the train to Batavia, and even before it pulls out, I know I'm not going to be traveling alone. I see. Well, hello, Tanya. What a coincidence. Yeah, woods are full of them. But to find you on the train to Batavia, when I only decided to go this morning... May I sit with you? Sure. Now, don't tell me you're not surprised to see me here on the train. Okay, I won't. You're still on your uh, fishing trip? Yep. I take it you're still looking for color and excitement. Of course. Ah, Tanya, my dear. Oh, hello, Enrique. I'm indeed fortunate to find I will have such delightful company on the trip to Batavia. I am sorry, but as you see, Enrique, I already have a traveling companion. It is my loss, but your gain, senor. Mitchell. I am Chavez. I congratulate you. Oh, thank you. What for? For your excellent taste. For your admiration of beauty. I do claim these virtues. Okay, so we're a couple of virtuous kids. Perhaps if we were to talk further, we might discover additional things in common. Perhaps if you were to go further down the aisle, Enrique, you might uncover a vacant seat. <laughs> oh, the aloof Tanya. But I'm a man of great patience, my dear. I can wait. I will undoubtedly see you later. Both of you. Nice guy. I cannot stand him. I cannot seem to get away from him. Everywhere I go, he follows me. Some hobby. Look at him, sitting there leering at me. I... What's the matter? Stephen. Hmm? That little man who is sitting next to Chavez. Hmm? Oh, you mean the gent reading the newspaper? Yes. What about him? Do you know him? No, why? He seems to be very interested in you. I've noticed him several times staring over the top of his newspaper at you. Oh? Perhaps he thinks he recognizes you. Yeah, perhaps he does. So, now all of a sudden, I've got three people to worry about. Tanya, her loyal fan, Chavez, whose routine with her could have been staged for my benefit, and the little gent who's playing peekaboo with me from behind his newspaper. Any one of them could be after that slip of paper in my pocket. The question is, who? And I know that's one question I've got to answer before one of them politely arranges for me to drop dead. The hours drag by, and the train starts winding through some rugged-looking jungle country, and pretty soon I get sleepy and doze off. I don't know how long I've been asleep when something brings me out of it. A hand in my breast pocket. Hey. Oh, oh, I I didn't know you were awake, Steve. That's obvious. Oh, you must think I'm a pickpocket. I wanted a cigarette and discovered I was all out, and I thought you were asleep, so I was just trying to get one of yours without disturbing you. I see. Steve, what was that? Rifle shots, and the train is stopping. Listen, did you hear that? Come here. Oh, great. Steve, we must get off the train quickly. Come. Wait a minute. But, but they will rob us, kill us. Come on, we, we can hide in the jungle. Oh, sure. I bet I'll be nice and safe in the jungle with you, won't I? What? Oh, Steve, don't just sit there. Come. Oh, okay, what's the difference? Let's go. Hurry, hurry. Uh, Steve, the train is almost stopped. We can jump. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, come on. All right. Come, we'll get back into the underbrush and wait for the gorillas to clear off. You know, you seem to be an old hand at this. Oh, I've had experience with you. Gorilla band bandits before, Steve. They frequently kill for pleasure. Oh, well, this ought to be far enough. Yes. You know, you didn't seem very surprised by this raid, Tanya. What do you mean by that? Nothing. I hold it. What's the matter? Someone's coming through the brush. Get down. But... Quiet. Chavez. Well, Senor Mitchell and Tanya, my dear. Enrique. What are you doing here? I assure you I did not wish to intrude upon your privacy, my dear, but I noticed the two of you slipping off the train into the jungle and decided it would be a wise course for me to follow also. Well, this is nice and cozy, isn't it? Just the three of us? Under some circumstances, three is considered a lucky number, Senor Mitchell. Well, I guess sooner or later I'll find out. I'm certain you will. How about the gorillas? They still going through the train? See, I waited until they entered the car in front of ours before I slipped off. From their shots, I gathered they were searching for guns and ammunition. And, of course, were picking up such money and jewelry as they could from the passengers. Wait a minute. Listen. 
The train is pulling away. Come on. Steve, we've got to catch the train. Oh! Tanya, what happened? Oh, oh I, I must have twisted my ankle. Here, I'll help you up. Thank you. Can you walk? Yes, I, I think so. I will help you. We must hurry. Never mind, we're too late. What? There goes the train around the bend. We're stranded. Oh, no. Not in this jungle. That accident of yours sure happened at the wrong time, Tanya. Or was it the right time? What are you talking Skip about? It. I... Hmm. Looks like we're not alone after all. See, two other passengers sitting on the tracks over there. They must have been stranded also. Well, we might as well go over and get acquainted. Steve, look. One of those men is the one who was looking at you over his newspaper. Yeah, I suppose he got stranded accidental like too. Who is the other man? Search me. What, hell? Fellow passengers in distress. Yeah, you got left behind too, huh? No, uh, this train simply left without warning. Willoughby's the name, Peter Willoughby. And this is Van Rolt here. Uh, mine's Mitchell. This is Tanya and Chavez. How do you do? do? I see you've still got your newspaper, Van Rolt. Yeah. What about it? Oh, maybe it was just my imagination, but I seemed to notice on the train that you were more interested in me than your paper. I am sure it was your imagination, my dear Mitchell. Well, what do we do now, gentlemen? I'd say the first order of business is to get back to civilization. Marvelous specimens here and all that, but... Specimens? Uh, rare birds. I'm an ornithologist, old man. Matter of fact, that's why I was stranded. Thought I spotted a gallus gallus through the window and got off to try for a better look. What's a gallus gallus? Quite a rare red jungle bird. Be quite a feather in my cap if I... Oh, I say, that's rather good, is it? <laughs> bird, feather in my cap. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. Well... I think we'd better spread out and see if we can spot any villages near here. Suppose we each try a different direction and meet back here in half an hour. That sounds like a sensible plan. Yeah. Well, come along. Mitchell. What is it, Van Ralph? I have vital information for you. Oh, what is it? We must arrange a time when we can be alone to talk. I see. But not now. The others might notice. Coming, Van Ralph. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will see you later, Mitchell. So we all fan out in different directions. I go into the jungle a little way and sit down on a stump to think things over. This deal is getting dandier by the moment. Now I've got four people to keep my eyes on. Willoughby, the bird man, Tanya, Chavez, and Van Rolf, the little gent who says he's got vital information for me. Suddenly, I realize the jungle has gotten awfully quiet. I get an itch between my shoulder blades like someone's behind me. I whirl around, and there, holding a gun on me, is Van Rolf. Stand right where you are, Mitchell. Well, so you're the boy, Van Rolf. Quiet. That vital information you said you had for me, it wouldn't be a bullet, would it? Mitchell, I warn you. One move, and you're a dead man. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Look, Van Rolf. I know what you're after. Quiet. If you think I'm going to stand here and let you plug me... Fool! Hey, look behind you. Oh, brother. A big cobra. Get out of the way, quick. With pleasure. That was why you were pointing that gun in my direction. Of course. As I approached, I could see the cobra was ready to strike. Thanks for the snake charming act. Now, what was this vital information you've got for me? I wanted to talk to you about... Wait. Yeah, sounds like the others are coming. Tonight when the others are asleep, slip away into the jungle. I'll meet you and we can talk. Okay. I say, what's all the shooting about? Steve, are you all right? Yeah. Van Rout here just killed a snake who was about to do likewise to me. Oh, senor, this jungle is not for me. I suggest we get out of here. Any of you spot any villages? Mm-mm, no. Not a thing? I spotted something. A village? No. Pavo Muticus. Pavo... Oh, great. Another bird, I suppose. Green peacock. Magnificent specimen. Look, right now we're more interested in magnificent specimens of people. Well, I guess our best bet is to follow the railroad tracks. Eventually we'll get to a town that way. But, Steve, it might take days. You got any better ideas? No, but... Neither have I, so let's go. So we start track walking. Van Rolf's in the lead, Tanya next, and then comes Chavez and Willoughby, rubbernecking at all the birds. I bring up the rear so I can keep an eye on all of them. Towards dark, we find a little clearing and stop for the night. I wait until it looks like the others are all asleep. 
Then I go out into the jungle a little way and wait for Van Rolf. At this point, I don't know whether his pitch about having vital information is just a trap or not, but I've got to find out. I sit there a while, wondering uneasily how many tigers there are to the square mile in this neck of the woods, and then it dawns on me that the jungle has gotten suddenly quiet again. The scream comes from my left. I head in that direction fast, but I don't have far to go. I round a tree, and there it is in front of me on the ground. There's enough moonlight to tell me who it is, Van Ralt. And he's wearing an ear-to-ear grin that was put there with a knife. Mitchell, where are you? Mitchell! Huh? Oh, Chavez, here I am. Oh. Oh. Van Ralt. Yeah. Somebody shut his mouth by opening his throat. Incidentally, you got here fast, didn't you, Chavez? Huh? Right. I am a light sleeper, Mitchell. I heard the scream and I came running. You sure did. What is it? What was that internal noise? It wasn't a bird, Willoughby. <gasps> Van Ralt. Oh, yeah. Van Ralt. But, but who did it, Steve? That's a good question, Tanya. Perhaps some natives robbed and killed him. No, I don't think so. His wallet's right here in his pocket. And... Mm. What is it, old boy? Well, according to his papers, Van Ralt was a Dutch intelligence agent here in Java. That mean anything to any of you? No. Why should it, Mitchell? That's another good question. You and Tanya seem to specialize in them, Chavez. I say, I don't know what this blooming mess is all about, but one thing I do know. We'd better get out of here before we all get killed. I'm for pushing on the rest of the night. So it's me, Willoughby. Lead the way. I think not. What do you mean? Well, I can't say I'm anxious to have any of you three behind me in this jungle. Particularly you, Mitchell. Oh? You're not above suspicion, you know. After all, we found you standing over Van Rowe's body. <laughs> Maybe you've got a point there, Willoughby. Okay. As long as none of us trusts each other, we'll walk side by side, just like little playmates. Come on, let's get started. Steve, I, I can't go much farther. I've walked all night. How about you, Willoughby? Seen enough rare birds to last you for a while? Believe it or not, old boy, I haven't seen a one. I've been too busy trying to look over my shoulder. Chavez? I... I would welcome a rest, Mitchell. I'm not what one would call the outdoor type. Steve, look. Hmm? There's a river right ahead of us. Yeah. And a little suspension bridge. Come on. I say, old man, you don't call this rickety collection of vines and sticks a bridge, do you? Well, I admit it doesn't compare with a Golden Gate Bridge, but it looks like the only way of getting across the river. I'd sooner wait it, old boy. Be pretty tough to do against that current. Yes, it is too swift. Mitchell, this area looks familiar to me. What do you mean? Well, I visited the Van Loen plantation several years ago. I think it was in this area, but I'm not sure whether it was upstream or downstream from here. Perhaps if some of us were to go in one direction, some in the other, we might locate it. Now I think we'd better all stay together. I'm with you there, Mitchell. I wouldn't relish wandering around this jungle alone. Look, there is a path on the other side of the bridge. Yeah, that looks like our best bet. Okay, we'll cross the bridge one at a time. I'll go first. Be careful, Steve. Hey, brother, this thing is about as steady as a hula dancer's skirt. Is it holding all right? Yeah, so far, I... Hey, Mitchell, the bridge is collapsing. Steve! I'm all right. Water's only way steep. They, they, the, the current's dragging me. Mitchell, watch out. Those rocks ahead of you. I can't hold back. Steve, are you hurt? My arms. They're wedged into the crack between these rocks. I can't move. I'll try to get out to you, old man. No, no, the current's too strong. Spread out all of you. See if you can find that plantation. Bring back some help and hurry. So off they go, leaving me huddled against the rock in the middle of the river, wondering how long I'm going to have to wait. But as it turns out, I don't have to wait long at all. Ten minutes later, a figure steps out of the underbrush onto the river bank. It's Willoughby. Still stuck tight, old boy? Yeah. Did you find any help? No, I can't say as I did, Mitchell. That isn't surprising, because I wasn't looking for any. Huh? But, hey, 
Why the gun? Now, isn't that fairly obvious? Oh, great. So you're the boy who's after the formula. Quite right. I suppose you've got the other half of it. Right here in my coat pocket, old boy. Quite an act you put on. Willoughby the bird lover. Amazing the things you can find out in an encyclopedia. Well, why don't you plug me and get it over with? Wouldn't think of it, my dear chap. Shot might be heard by the others. Besides, I've got a much better plan. What do you mean? I take off my coat, fold it neatly, put it on the bank, so. Then I simply wade out to you, get the envelope out of your pocket, tap you on the head with my gun, try you loose and let you float downstream. Well, sounds just great, but aren't you taking a chance wading out in this current? The reward justifies the danger, old boy. Besides, as you can see, I've tied a length of vine around a tree trunk here. I'll keep the other end in my hand. That way I can always get back to the bank if I lose my footing. Well, that's nice to know. Well, here I come. Be careful. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you for the world, old boy. Oh, I say, I must admit, you're a frightfully good sport about all these bitches. Oh, sure. Hip, hip, cricket and all that. I must give you a helpless feeling perched there with your arms caught in the rocks, watching me close in. Well, I must admit, I can think of a few thousand places I'd rather be at the moment. Well, here I am. How jolly. Now, I'll just slip my hand in your pocket and get that envelope, if you don't mind. Let me help you. Oh, Mick. Why, your arms are free. They sure are. Drop the gun. Why not? Oh, that's better. This whole thing was a trap. That's right. They're let go of me. Sure. Glad to apply. Oh. Help! 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 Brother. Steve! Steve! Eh? Oh, Tanya. I couldn't find her. That's okay. I can get out with the help of this vine Willoughby was kind enough to rig up for me. But I thought your arms were caught in the rock, Steve. Sorry to send you on a wild goose chase, but I had to find out who was who, and this seemed like the best way of doing it. There. What do you mean? Let's see. Willoughby said it was in his coat. Yep. He was right. I don't understand. What does that slip of paper have to do with it? Quite a little, Tanya. But it doesn't matter now. It's all over. Then then Willoughby was the one who killed Van Raals? Yeah. Willoughby was the boy I was after all along. Or I should say the boy who was after me. He had it all figured out. But I guess he forgot that old Chinese proverb. Proverb? Sure. Killer who pretend to be ornithologists sometime end up getting the bird. Come on. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondo, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Kahn. Others in our cast tonight were Don Diamond, Alec Harford, Maria Palmer, and Paul Freese. On NBC.